from another mister hello welcome my name is rusty humphreys this is the rusty humphreys rebellion we're powered by right wing news you can also see us on liberty one tv but we're going to join them a little late tonight i'll tell you about that you can also hear the podcast every day on itunes and stitcher it's very easy to download the podcast podcast is the audio version of this show, and I really encourage you to do so. When you're you can't sit around and watch it all day long, watch the show. That's okay. Uh, you can listen to it in your car, and it's very easy to do. We're also sponsored by the nice folks at the Hear Me Out app, and that is an app that I'm very uh, closely associated with because they're doing an incredible job. We have a real problem problem with social media giants silencing conservative speech censoring conservative speech. The folks at the Hear Me Out app are not doing that. And it's kind of like Twitter, but you could listen to what I have to say or you can say whatever it is. You don't have to type in 140 characters. You get 42 seconds. Download the app, Hear Me Out app, and uh, so, you, so I can follow you. Type in hashtag Rusty and I'll look for you. And we're going to have some uh, giveaways, some more giveaways. I gave something away the other day and I got to announce the winner. But we're going to have more giveaways coming up in a little bit. All right, let's see here. Where are you checking in from? Oh, you know what else I want to know? What is the temperature? Because it's cold in most places. Let's see where I'm at temperature-wise. You're going to hate me because I'm in Arizona. And it is a little chilly. (laughs) All right, you want to know what it is in Arizona right now? In the Phoenix area? Uh, 64. 64 degrees at uh, 7.02 p.m. What What is the temp? It, it got up to, uh, how high did it get today? Well, it's going to be 76 tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I know it is not that way around the country. So I'm very curious what your temperature is, too. Let's say a little hellos, and then we're going to get to work here. Again, check in. Tell me who you are and where you're deplorable from. Uh, Gail's checking in. Judy checking in. Hi, Happy New Year, Judy. Jessica's there. Martin checking in from the UK. Tim is checking in from Jacksonville, Florida. Linda's there from California. Richard is from Crestline, California. Vance from Parker, Colorado. John is a U.S. Army vet from Tennessee. Thank you for your service to our country, John. We appreciate you. Ernie is there saying Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Ernie. Thank you very much. Deborah, Happy New Year. Sam is in Jackson, Michigan. Carla is from Arkansas. Annie checking in. Michael is from New Hampshire. Rick is from New York. Josanne is there. Hey, Josanne. Randy's a deplorable from Minnesota. Uh, Dana is from Wahala, South Carolina. Russ, Happy New Year's from Adelaide, South Australia, mate. How's it going there? Elizabeth is in Kentucky. David is in Mustang, Oklahoma. Michael is in, Mike is in Arizona. David says, hey, dude, nice show. Hey, Michael, nice show. Hey, Dave. Hey, dude, good day for you too, dude. Awesome. Randy Drain in the Swamp. Martin has shared the video. That's the other thing we need you to do. Share the video. Let people know the truth can be heard every night, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, right here on Facebook and Liberty One TV and all these great pages that carry the show. Uh, We really, really appreciate it. Mike Dean is from North Carolina. Deborah, upstate New York. Texas is where Steve is. Ralph says Clinton's for prison. Jessica is a deplorable from the second most corrupt county in Illinois, St. Clair County. Lester is a New York veteran. Rick is checking in from the Philippines. How you doing, Rick? Good to see you. Connie checking in from Blairsville, Georgia. By the way, I, I don't know if you know this, Blairsville, Georgia, but um, there was a Georgia team that played football yesterday, and they won the game. <laughs> who, who, who's everybody for, for the college championships? Who you, who, who you cheering for? See, I was born in Georgia. And I lived in Atlanta quite a bit. And uh, I like that song, Devil Went Down to Georgia. He's looking for a soul steal. 
So I got to go for Georgia. I'm curious where you're at on this one. Joe, hello from a deplorable for the next seven years from Texas. Elijah is in freezing West Florida. Thank you, global warming. Uh, Brian is uh, checking in. Carmen is there, Kansas. Alicia, Brendan is there. Roger says, glad you have sound this time. Usually I have sound. Sometimes you have to click on the post so you can hear the sound. Or if you miss it, you can always get the podcast in an hour or so. Joe checking in. Mark in Arabia. Louisiana. Randy says we'll p- repeal Obamacare. I think we've kind of done that. Lester says deplorables rule. Yeah, yeah. Sean is, Shauna is from Utah. Okay, Shauna, let's ask you this. So we're just talking about Orrin Hatch retiring. Now, I am not, I said, and I said this on the Hear Me Out app earlier today, so I'm repeating myself, but it's good stuff. I am not a guy that says just because you're getting a little bit older, we don't want to hear from you anymore. That is kind of what has happened in America. Boy, once you get, it's it's almost like once you get got to 50, you're too old, you're too dumb, especially in this era of the millennials. And so if you're 50 and over, you're done for. I'm, I don't believe in that. However, Orrin Hatch got into the Senate in 1977. I was in sixth grade. I'm 50-something years old. Orrin Hatch got in the Senate when I was in the sixth grade. Do you think maybe he's been there a little too long? The answer is yes. So it is good that Orrin Hatch is stepping down. The bad? I'm sick of these career politicians. Romney? Really? we got to have Romney again? I mean, come on. And by the way, Utah, you guys shouldn't fall for the Romney thing. What do you mean, Rusty? Yes, he was governor of Utah, but how fast did he get out of that state? As quick as he could get the hell out of Utah, he did. And he's gone. He's living on the East Coast. He had that house with the car elevators that looked like Iron Man's house in in San Diego. This guy's been everywhere except for Utah, and now he wants to be your senator? Don't fall for it. Just don't. I'm sick of people like that. Oh, and speaking of Senate, here's something you should support. Did you hear that Michelle Bachman may be running for the seat that Al Franken just ran away from today. That interests me. I like Michelle Bachman. Michelle Bachman and I have spent some uh, time together, and I know her on a personal level. I think she is awesome. As cool as you think Michelle Bachman might be, she's even cooler. So we love Michelle Bachman and are very, very supportive of Michelle Bachman. Uh, so uh, I hope Michelle Bachman is uh, is the man. Okay, uh, I am. I've got to, We're going to add add Liberty One TV. So let me add the music again, and let's see if we can add Liberty One TV and see what happens. Hold on, I'm trying something different. If it doesn't work, it's all my fault. Here we go. We're going to start this one. Okay, are we on with everybody? I think so. Liberty One TV. Are you guys there? How y'all doing? I'm, I'm Rusty Humphreys, and you know we've kind of started without you, but we still love you. Check in. Let us know who you are and where you're deplorable from. We got a lot going on here. We were just talking about um, Orrin Hatch, and that Orrin Hatch retiring uh, is a good thing, not because he's super old. He's just been in the Senate too long. He got into the Senate in 1977 when I was in the sixth grade. Now, I don't know about you, but I've done a lot since the sixth grade. And um, I just think that's too long in the Senate. That is not what our founding fathers intended for you to spend that kind of time in the Senate or the House, in government at all. So Orrin Hatch being out, that's good. Uh, I do not think that Mitt Romney running again for another office is a good thing for the country, nor is it good for Utah. Yes, he was the governor of Utah, but as soon as he got out of being governor, he got the tea. He ran the hell out of there. Oh, but he's a Mormon. So he's, oh, there's other Mormons. Get a different Mormon. I'm just tired of these guys that can't do anything but govern. Well, Mitt Romney did a lot of business. Yes, he did. But since then, all he's wanted is the power. Oh, and how about, you remember that big press conference when he told off Donald Trump? You know, enough's enough with this guy. Utah, don't fall for it. The second he stopped being governor of Utah, he hightailed it out. 
and moved to the East Coast and moved to San Diego and did everything but hang out in Utah. So don't buy it. Don't let a carpetbagger come in and uh, take over Utah. That's what I think. All right, go ahead. Please check in. Where are you from? And also, I'm curious of what the temperature is, where you're at. Wayne is in Kokomo, Indiana. They got one degrees there. Uh, Bayou Billy is a deplorable down from the Bayou. Annie's in Arizona. Susan is a Texas cold. Um, Dana says the poor kid's life in the submarine is ruined while Hillary and Huma walk. Yeah. Michael had a nice warm 75 where he was. Maria, happy new year. Kevin is in Wisconsin. Uh, Roger is in Ohio where it's 11 degrees. Joanne's in Pennsylvania. It's one degree. Nelda is in Georgia. Jeffrey, it's 46 in Plant City. I'm doing a weather report, a national weather report. Belton, Missouri, 19. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, Annie says, uh, Arizona's freaking nice. We got a good yes. It's, uh, what did I say it was? I think it's 46 here. Do, 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 do. I think I'm here. Uh, what, what is it now? Hit the weather. Oh, so, I'm sorry, 64 in Arizona, 64. It'll be 76 tomorrow. Terry at Liberty One TV, did it work? Am I on? Testing one, two, three. Ter- Terry? Hello, Ter- Terry? Are we on? The Liberty One TV? <laughs> we'll, get a, we'll get a yes or nothing coming up in seconds. Hold on. Are we on? We are good. Okay. Awesome. Liberty One TV rocks. You know what else rocks? Have you seen these Yeti cups? I've seen people carry them around. And I go, well, I don't drink coffee. And I don't care much about it and whatever. Was I wrong? Oh, was I wrong? The Yeti, Y-E-T-I, Yeti, is the most incredible technology. Okay, here, here's here's the technology. Fire, number one, the wheel. Then the next great technology was the TiVo, and now it's the Yeti. I'm telling you. So the great technology of mankind, fire, wheel, TiVo, and Yeti. Because look at this ice. I put ice in this thing yesterday. Yesterday at about 9 in the morning. Look at this. That's nine in the morning yesterday ice. I don't know how it does it. I don't know if if the good Lord has come down and said, I will I will give the power of ice to the Yeti or it was the devil. I don't know what it is. All I know is it is yummy cold and it works. Let's see. Anna's uh, Clearwater, Florida, 45 there. Brian around 10 and lowering by morning. Sarknack Lake, minus 17 degrees is where Lester is. Ugh. Mike is 17 in North Carolina. Allen, 13 degrees in Michigan. Dallas, Texas, 20 degrees. Oh, my gosh. 70 degrees in South Australia, 11 in Greenville, Michigan. Bill is uh, Ohio, 8 degrees. Ugh. Minus 2 in Burton, Michigan. Thank you, John. All right, you guys are all awesome. Roy says it's so cold here by Chicago. I seen a young punk. I seen a young punk pull up his own pants. That's cold. If they're pulling up their pants in Chicago, you know it's cold. <sighs> okay. Well, let's see some stories. There's some new news about uh, the Clinton crime family, and this one is interesting. This is a story that came out about two hours ago. It's, it sounds like something that we've kind of talked about, but it's now becoming more officialized. And that is, um, and this is written by my, an old friend of mine, an old boss. He used to be the um, editor-in-chief at the Washington Times. That's the conservative one. Times is the conservative one. The Post is the liberal one. His name is John Solomon, and if he wrote it, you, it's 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 real, okay? Congressional investigators find irregularities in the FBI handling of the Clinton email case. Well, what what is what is this? What what is what is John Solomon saying? It's a good question. Let us find out, shall we? Republicans 
on key in key congressional. Oh, now my computer's messed up. Thank you. Sorry about that. It's coming up up here. Republicans on key congressional committees say they have uncovered. Come on, computer. Anyway, they say they've uncovered some stuff. Investigators confirmed that the FBI began drafting a statement exonerating Clinton of any crimes while the evidence responsive to subpoenas um, hadn't been turned in yet. For the first time, investigators say they have secured written evidence that the FBI believed that there was evidence that some laws were broken when the former Secretary of State and her top aide transmitted classified information through her insecure private email server, lawmakers and investigators told The Hill. Okay? That's big. That's impressive. Okay? What, what that means is, is that we're making progress. And the thing is, I mean, I knew it. You knew it. This is no surprise. What the surprise is, is that it's taking Congress and everybody else so long to catch up to us. But I've known the Clintons were crooks. You've known the Clintons were crooks. And then, you know, oh, the Russians, they did all this stuff. The only thing Russians did, if they did it at all, was work with WikiLeaks and report information that the Clintons had done. That's it. They just got the truth out. Now, I'm not saying it's the right thing. But I don't think it was collusion. Um, yeah, Carol says they broke some laws. No, they broke a lot of laws. I don't think the Clintons know how to go through a day without breaking some big law. And laughing and getting along and thinking they're just something special. Um, and then another story that has come out. It appears old Huma... Let me get to whom in a second. This one's another one. This one came out a couple of days ago, but this one is also interesting and yet not surprising at all. A Hillary Clinton backer paid $500,000 to fund women accusing Trump of sexual misconduct before the election day. That's according to a report. One of Hillary Clinton's wealthy pals paid a half a million dollars in an unsuccessful effort to fund women willing to accuse President Trump of sexual misconduct before the election. That was reported on Sunday by the New York Times. Susie Tompkins Buell, the of the founder of Esprit Clothing and a major Clinton campaign donor for many years, gave money to celebrity lawyer Lisa Bloom, who was working with a number of Trump accusers at the time, according to the paper's bombshell report. Bloom solicited donors by saying she was working with women who might find the courage to speak out against Trump if the donors would provide funds for security, relocation, and possibly a safe house. Basically, uh, uh, you give us the cash, we'll come up with the crime. Give us cash, we'll figure out something, is what this is. Um, it's just, It's just awful. And again, we've, we've known about this. You knew about this. I knew about this. But now, now the mainstream media is sort of kind of catching up to the truth. They don't want to report it, but pretty soon they're going to have to. Right? Lawyer told the paper she didn't communicate with Clinton or her campaign of any of this. She also maintained that she only represented clients whose stories she had corroborated and disputed the premise that she offered money to coax clients to come forward, the paper said. Doesn't cost anything to publicly air allegations, Bloom said. Security and relocation are expensive and were sorely needed in this case of this magnitude in a country filled with so much anger, hate, and violence. Well, it's a country filled with so much anger, hate, and violence because of you, Lisa Bloom, and your ma- your mama, Gloria Allred. You two have caused more damage to this country than just about anybody. And it's uh, it's a shame and uh, again, politics trumps everything to these people. Ends justify the means. It doesn't matter what the truth is. It's the ends justify the means with the Democrats, and it's wrong. And again, I'll get people, oh, I'm a Democrat, and I don't feel that way. I'm not talking about you. There's a lot of good, hardworking Americans 
who believe in America, who believe in American exceptionalism, who believe in making America great again, like Donald Trump would say. And they say, well, I'm a Democrat. I've always been a Democrat. Uh, my grandmama's been a Democrat. My daddy, my great grandpa, we've always been Democrats. The problem is the Democrat Party of today is not like the Democrat Party of back then. This Democrat Party lies. Now you say, oh, come on. It, it, it can't. They, they don't lie that much, Rusty. They, they, they're, they're, they're just regular folks and, and, and they don't lie. Well, yeah, they do. And I've got a video that I want to share with you that, that, that proves a point. That's a great example of how Democrats lie because, all, because the ends justify the means. And one of the best stories and examples of the Democrats lying and changing their positions for nothing but uh, political power comes from the illegal immigration movement. At first, a lot of Democrats were in the same place that we were, looking out for the best interest of our country, looking out for the best interest of our workers. And then they went, but wait a second. Can we get votes out of this deal? And people went, well, yeah, I think we could. We could probably lie to the illegal immigrants, make them voters, and and then they'd vote for Democrats. And that became a sweet deal for them. They went, well, okay, well, we can do that. We like that. And you say, well, it's not that cut and dry. Well, it kind of is. And there's a video that's been floating out around for a while that I think does an excellent job of exposing the left and how they've handled the illegal immigration thing. And it's, it's if you ask me, absolutely shameful uh, the way some of these Democrats have behaved. Let's, uh, let me take it back here. And, uh, and show you this, uh, this video you may have seen online, but I think it's a, an excellent, excellent example of how the Democrats lie, cheat, and steal for their own Illegal benefit. aliens Here and illegal go. aliens should not be treated the same as people. <laughs> Don't you love it when the technology is supposed to work and it doesn't? All right, one more time. You know why it is. Even my computer doesn't People want People who enter it. the United States without our permission are illegal aliens, and illegal aliens should not be treated the same as people who entered the U.S. legally. The president's decision to end DACA was heartless and it was brainless. When we use phrases like undocumented workers, we convey a message to the American people that their government is not serious about combating illegal immigration. Hundreds, hundreds of thousands of families will be ripped apart. If you don't think it's illegal, you're not going to say it. I think it is illegal and wrong. Tens of thousands of American businesses will lose hardworking employees. A biometric-based employer verification system with tough enforcement and auditing is necessary to significantly diminish the job magnet that attracts illegal aliens to the How United States. They may Mexican have known room? no other 70? country before that. You mean after that? No, voluntarily that. registered themselves. Do you have things you want to do All before you illegal retire? Aliens really pre- uh, I don't know what the hell's going on with my computer. Sorry. It happens. These darn computers, sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. But you get the idea. It's uh it's shameful. And again, it's not just Chuck Schumer on this video. Hillary does it. Obama does it. They all do it. And then and then we're told we're the racist ones because we don't understand. No, I tell you, I understand. I understand so much. I made a music video about it. I want you to know what you think about it. Uh, I'll tell you what. There's everybody is sneaking. We got too many people sneaking into the USA and it's not right. And it's going to hurt our country. Oh, here's Obama. Too many people sneaking into the USA, and it's not right if you ask me. Okay, so can you help me with this, sir? Yes, tell me. What? Okay, okay, so I want to get into the USA. What do I do? Uh, take this one. I'm going north. North. Yes, north. Going north. Okay, I can do it. Let's go. Now everybody has this notion. Come to the USA. Don't you worry about money. Stupid Americans pay. Education too. 
Just sneak across the border and they'll take care of you. Well, they're crossing from Tijuana and California's line. And up in Vancouver, nobody seems to mind. It can take from China, yeah, you can go away. Cause everybody is sneaking into the USA. Stand. Tell your friends you're leaving. Let's stuff them in your van. They're coming from Afghanistan through San Francisco Bay. Everybody is sneaking into the USA. Well, they're coming from the galleys down Arizona way. Everybody is sneaking into the USA. I love America. Everybody is sneaking into the USA. Everybody is sneaking. Not sneaking in the camera. Everybody is sneaking into the USA. We gotta get out of here. Go, 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 go. Ah, uh, that was fun. Uh, and by the that last uh, scene where I had the with the. Uh, Mariachi band that cost me twenty dollars. So anyway, I had to teach him the song. All right, so yeah, and somebody say, is that uh, is that video on YouTube? It is. You can find it. Just type in "sneaking in the USA" and my name, Rusty Humphreys, and you can find it. it won't cost you anything. I should be uh, I should be charging money for that, but I'm not. What else? What else is going on in the? Okay, can I try? Do you want me to try that video one more time? I don't know what in the world, but it's so funny. Because these guys are so phony. Let me try the video again of uh, the Democrats talking about how evil illegal immigration is and then how wonderful it is. Let's see if we can pull it up here one more time. And the answer is no. No other country but ours and have voluntarily registered themselves. All illegal aliens present in the United States on the date of enactment of our bill must quickly register their presence with the United States government or face imminent deportation. But we have to send a clear message. Just because your child gets across the border, that doesn't mean the child gets to stay. So we don't want to send a message that is contrary to uh, our laws or will encourage more children to make that dangerous journey. With respect to uh, the notion that I can just suspend deportations through executive order. Uh, that's just not the case uh, because there are laws on the books that Congress has passed uh, and I know that everybody here at Bell is studying hard so you know that we've got three branches of government. Uh, Congress passes the law. The executive branch's job is to enforce and implement those laws and then the judiciary has to uh, interpret uh, the laws. There are enough laws on the books by Congress that are very clear in terms of how we have to enforce uh, our immigration system that for me to simply through executive order ignore those congressional mandates uh, would uh, not conform with my appropriate role as president. And of course, that's exactly what he did. Exactly what Obama did. By the way, uh, thanks to... President Trump and standing up looks like there is a huge, huge protest going underway, possibly a revolution in Iran. Would have been a lot easier for the uh, Iranians to overthrow the Ayatollahs had we not sent them billions of dollars. 
and unmarked money so the Iranian government could do whatever they wanted. But no, Obama had to go get his Hollywood buddies and Jack Black and, oh yeah, if we don't do this, there's going to be a lot more war. No, there was a lot more war because we made a deal with Iran, you dummies! Idiots! Now, here's one thing I will say with President Trump. Now, he's very good with negotiations, but he is, he's not real good yet, I don't think, and you can tell me what you think. I think he can be easily fooled by anybody that says anything nice to him. If you say, Mr. President, you're awesome, he likes you. If you say, Mr. President, you're an idiot, he hates you with the power of 10,000 sons. I think the Democrats are going to pull a Reagan on him. What do you mean Reagan was awesome? Reagan was awesome. Reagan got fooled on the illegal immigration thing with Mexico and illegal immigrants. This before now, boys and girls, this man is this is before many y'all's time. Grandpa Rusty here, back in the nineteen hundreds and eighties. Ronald Reagan was the president of these United States of America. And the Democrats said, if we have amnesty for Mex for the people who got into our country, Mr. President, we'll build y'all a wall, and then we'll never, ever let one other person come in illegally, never in a million kajillion years. Just give them amnesty first, Mr. President, and we'll do all the other things later. And the president, Ronald Reagan, was a very nice older gentleman. And he said, well, if y'all uh, tell me something, of course I'll believe you because you're Americans and you have to love America as much as I do. Well, the problem was, was that they didn't love America as much as Ronald Reagan did and they fooled him. And they fooled him. And the question is, are they going to pull that same play out of the playbook and try that on President Trump? And we have to say, Mr. President, don't fall for it. Don't fall for it. It's a trip. It's a trap. You agree with the, with the dreamers and all that other stuff after they start building that wall, not before. That's what I think. Let's see. Bob says, stuff it. I would not lower myself to listen to this propaganda. Um, ask me if you would, or tell me if you would, what propaganda am I doing? I'm, I'm just telling you all the truth. Carol said, some guy in the five claimed it was their money that we just gave it back with interest, huh? Well, it is true. When the Shah of Iran, back in 1900 and, and late 1970s, there was a guy who ran the country of Iran, and his name was the Shah of Iran. And there was an uprising, and there was a yelling, and there was a screaming, and there was people saying, oh, we want to get us an Ayatollah. So they captured Americans. And you don't capture no Americans, except we had a guy named Jimmy Carter who was president of the United States, and he was a sissified, wussified, candy ass like Obama was. And so they knew, sorry, and they knew that if they took our hostages, Jimmy Carter, because he was a candy ass, wouldn't do anything about it. So they waited 444 days. And then, on the day of the great inauguration of Ronald Reagan, when the world became a happier, safer, shinier place, the Iranians let those hostages go. But beforehand, we froze that money. We said, oh, you're going to rip us off. You're going to cause trouble. We're going to freeze that money. And we're not going to give it back to you until you're good boys and girls. Well, they weren't good boys and girls. And so we should have frozen it and done it and continued to hold on to it. I, if you ask me, all the stuff that we've had to do to clean up the messes from Iran around the world because no one's caused more terrorism than Iran, you know what I think we should do? I think we should take the little Iranian card, just kind of. Thank you, Ayatollah. That'll take care of some of that national debt right there. Thank you very much. That's what I think. I don't know. What do you think? Let's see. Do, 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 do. Let's see here. Let's face it, says Donald. 
Obama's proving to be a traitor to this country. Nothing he did should come as a surprise. What he's doing is against the law. So he should be arrested, tried, and I'm sure convicted into the problem in Obama. Never going to happen, Donald. Never in a kajillion years. And by the way, we don't want former presidents being arrested. We don't. Because then we arrest the Democrat, and then the Democrat arrests the Republican. And next thing you know, we're a banana republic. All we're doing is arresting in the, the leaders from before. It's just not going to happen. Um, the Clintons are a different story because they won't stop. They just won't stop. They just think America is theirs for the taking, just like Al Gore did. Al Gore, when he lost that election, I know what happened on the day after the election. I'm Al Gore. I should have won. That was promised to be by my papa and my grandpapa. They said I should be president. So I'm going to really get the Americans back. I'm going to take as much money as I can. So I'm going to invent something that's going to scare enough of them that I get enough money that I can fly around on an airplane anytime I want. So he really pushed the whole global warming thing, which is nothing but a phony baloney thing. Wasn't it like this year, 2018, all of the polar ice caps were supposed to be gone, according to an inconvenient fact or whatever the hell that movie, <laughs> Inconvenient Truth, uh, which was nothing but a lie. It just was a lie. But proven to be a lie because there there is supposed to be not an ice cap on the planet by this this year. Not a, not a one. And we got polar bears out there sliding around like they're on a Coca-Cola commercial all over the place. So I don't know why anybody believes this crap. Jerry says, kudos, Rusty, you to man. Jerry in Kentucky, thank you. Shara Sharenda says, it wouldn't hurt my feelings, Chris. Terry says, Obama, traitor to the U.S., Chris says, I'm cleaning shop myself. Lori is from Vernon, Alabama. Carrie says, all presidents sent money overseas. Yes, they did. Now, oh, Judy says, Rush Limbaugh want to be both big, fat bigots. Judy, yes, I want to be making $50 million a year like Rush Limbaugh. And I knew Rush back in the day. I was the guy that got him to do parody songs, the funny songs. That was me. I used to be Rush Limbaugh on the show. Hey, blow Mr. Limbaugh. Let me kick them butt. Come on, Mr. Limbaugh. Come on. I did all the early funny stuff. Um, but see, the only bigot, Judy, is you. I mean, the first thing you did was make fun of my weight. So you're bigoted against fat people or you're bigoted against white people. Maybe you're bigoted against men. Maybe you're bigoted against Christians. Maybe you're bigoted against you. All I know is, is that you started off the year with hate. Hate in your heart and hate in your words. You should be ashamed of yourself. Trying to start a new year. Trying to make the world a better place. I am supporting my country and my president. I am criticizing Obama and the Clintons because they have demonstrable things that they have done against our country for political purposes. I don't care about politics. I'm so sick of politics. I hate all of them. I hate all the politicians. Except for Michelle Bachman running for Al Franken's seat. I'm in. I'm all in, 100%. Love Michelle Bachman. She's awesome. But these politicians, I'm sick of them. That's why Judy, Judy Harris Williams Tittleson, you should be as supportive of Donald Trump as I am. I hate Donald Trump. He grabbed woman's coochies and he's a, a horrible human. Put all of that aside because all of them talk like that. I don't know anybody's talk like that in the locker room. Then either your guy is a wussy or he's a liar. Okay. They all talk like that, especially 15 years ago. I believe it was 11 years ago that was recorded, but that long ago, trust me, they all did. You don't know you're talking about Rusty. Yes, I do. Okay. I'm not going to lie to you like all those people, like a Matt Lauer. Oh, I can't believe he would say things like that as he's busy uh, closing the door and locking women in with sex toys in his office. Right. Or every guy in Hollywood. What? Hollywood? They sexually harass women? What? 
I, I can't believe what liberals Louis C.K. whips it out in front of a lady. What? Of course they do. Okay, so let's just get past the pretense and let's be honest. Okay. The Clintons and the Obamas have used the goodwill of the American people for their own profit and gain. Clintons, their profit and gain is power and money. Obama's power and gain is he wants to fundamentally transform America where he and his buddies run everything, and that's what communists do. He's not a communist. He's not a socialist. He's a good guy. No, he's a socialist. He just wasn't as upfront about it as Bernie Sanders was. Now, here's another good example of why you, Judy, should like Trump. Because what Trump is doing, if Trump does what he says he's going to do, and the whole drain the swamp thing really happens, it's good for everybody. Because it gets those elitists out of power, which is why I don't want to see Mitt Romney there. Why I do want to see Michelle Bachman there, because she's not an elitist. She's not some rich, rich woman. I want to see real people in there going to Washington for a short amount of time, making a difference and going back home. This whole elitist political class has to end. We can't afford it anymore. And we can't afford their candy-ass pitiful solutions either. Now, Trump did something absolutely right. Okay. Oh, Trump declared Jerusalem the capital of Israel and the whole world's going to come to an end. First of all, Trump did not do any such thing. And I always want to say, have you been to Israel? These people that say this stuff, you ever been there? I've been to Israel 10 times. 10, 10, 10. Okay. I've been to the Palestinian areas. I've had guns put in my back. I've had my neck threatened to be cut off. I've had people threaten to shoot me in the back. Believe me, I've been there. I've done that. I've been to Iraq. I've been to Afghanistan. I've been to Darfur. I've been to Guantanamo Bay three times. I have been around. I have interviewed terrorist leaders face-to-face, eyeball-to-eyeball on more than one occasion. Okay? Okay? I know what they are thinking because they have told me. And see, here's where we don't get. They tend to tell the truth. Like, I remember I was interviewing one guy, and I was talking to these two guys, leaders of the Al-Aqsa Martyrs Brigade, and they're like, oh, yes, by the way, the, the guy next to you, his name's Muhammad, and he's going to be a martyr on Thursday. I was like, you're going you're gonna to kill yourself on Thursday? And he's like a 24-year-old guy, good-looking guy, by the way, young guy. Looked like he had it all together. He's like, yeah, I'm going to go into a marketplace in Jerusalem and blow myself up. I said, you don't really believe in that 72 virgin thing, do you? Oh, yes, yes, of course I do. I said, 72 virgins. Don't you wish, don't you want a couple that know what they're doing? <laughs> he did think that was funny. Here's the deal, though. Palestinians are professional victims professional some of the best professional victims in the history of the world i mean these guys are jesse jackson good maybe better because what they do is they stir up trouble stir up a big old pot of trouble and then they whine and complain that they don't get what they want okay that's the truth so trump is finally standing up and saying yeah we're not playing your game okay again Oh, the world says, oh, Donald Trump declared Jerusalem as the as the the capital of Israel. Guys, it's been the capital of Israel since 1968. Go, go there. Their, their president lives there. Their capital building, the Knesset, is there. They, it's, it's, again, we live in a world where the left wants us just to pretend things that aren't real. Well, golly jeepers, I pretend that uh, the capital of Israel is in Tel Aviv. Are there any buildings there? Any capital buildings there? Well, no, but I want to pretend, so that's all that matters. Well, Trump is like me, and he doesn't want to pretend anymore. So 
you professional uh, complainers, you professional victims, Palestine, Palestinians, it's time to put up or shut up. And Trump said something beautiful. Either you enter the peace negotiations or we're going to pull $300 million in aid. Yes, this is what we need to be doing around the world. You do what we, we, we need to act like parents. You do what we want or we're not going to give you your money for college. You do what we want, we're not going to pay for your car. You do what we want, and you're not going to be able to live under our roof. You do what we want, and we're not going to give you $300 million a year in aid. Do you agree or disagree? Am I wrong? Am I being a big old meanie? Huh? Do you agree with Trump? Give me a thumbs up or a heart. You agree, uh, Palestinians, you enter peace negotiations, or we pull the aid, heart or thumbs up. If you disagree... Give me the sad or the frowny face. Oh, I don't like Trump. We should be giving away our money to anybody that wants it. If, you, we, if they want our money, we should just give it to them. I'm a liberal. We should just give our money to everybody. And anybody who wants to live here, they should live here. And we'll pay for it and everything. By the way, you know, I grew up in the Seattle area. And I remember... I was a talk show host at a stage called KVI. I can't remember the year. It was when Ron, I mean, it was the year Ronald Reagan died. And they had this brilliant idea in Seattle. Oh, was it brilliant? We're going to have tent cities so the homeless of Seattle have a place to go. And I remember going, Are you guys really this stupid? Really? Are you, are you this dumb? Well, we just want to make sure that homeless people have a place to live, too. Uh-huh. And so you're just going to give a plot of land and let them put tents there and everything's going to be okay, right? Oh, yes, of course. We just want to help the homeless people. They're just so poor and innocent. Okay, here's what I know about a lot of um, homeless people. Yes, there are some people that are homeless, that are mentally ill, that are having a really hard time. Yes. But I also know that a great percentage of them, it is a lifestyle choice. <gasps> oh, my gosh, the liberals are going to come and attack me. It is a lifestyle choice. How do I know? Because I have a brother that's a home, been a homeless guy for years. Okay? He's told me. It is a lifestyle. They used to call them bums or hobos. That was the word, hobo. You get on trains and you'd go everywhere. But where were they going? Where were they going? Well, um, Doug, who says he's missing me in Reno, great example. What homeless tend to do, not every single one of them, there are some that are much worse off than others. But in general speaking, what you do is, is you go to places where the money is, okay, where there's more liberals there and they feel bad. Go to Seattle, San Francisco, go to California. You go to Reno, Nevada. Why Reno, Nevada? Because the, all the uh, casinos, after they've, they've uh, finished the buffets, they take all the buffet food and they give it to the homeless shelter. Doesn't that sound great? Well, yeah, except now you got all the homeless people getting a great buffet meal every night. Okay. But now you go to places like Seattle and they cannot understand why the homeless situation has exploded. And I was down by Disneyland a couple of weeks ago. There is mile after mile now in Anaheim and in downtown Los Angeles, mile after mile after mile after mile of these homeless tent cities of people living on the streets. Now, there's more in Los Angeles right now, more in California. Why? Because it's warmer there. And then there'll be more in Seattle in the, in the springtime and in the summertime because it's cooler there in the summertime. Um, anyway, I, I don't know why liberals never learn their lessons. They want to keep giving money to countries that hate us. Trump says, nope, you do what we want or we're going to pull the money. You win? Yeah, we're going to pull the money. You want to vote against us all the time? Give us the money. And he's right. And liberals, you should agree. Because the one thing that we do know, that tough love does work. 
Sometimes it's hard. And unfortunately, liberals want to live in a kindergarten world. So I understand sometimes if it feels good and it's hard, you don't want to do it. The problem is, conservatives, we have to be the adults. And we have to clean up the mess after you. And we have lived long enough with you liberals uh, spreading your crap, your feel-good, free-to-be, you-and-me garbage, and for us to keep cleaning up the mess. Now, I want to work with you. I want 2018 to be great. I want 2018 to be the greatest year of all time. I want America to come together. I do. But it's time for the children to grow up. Liberals, we need you. We need you to grow up. The world is not a happy, happy, happy place. There are bad people in this world. Just like there was a Hitler, we have an Ayatollah. Just like there was a Mussolini, we have Kim Jong-un. And so on and so on and so on. We can't just give money to everybody that wants it. And we can't just let anybody that wants to come to America to come to America. I wish we could. It doesn't work that way. You tried it with your shovel-ready jobs. Do you remember? Obama came in office, spent more money than all presidents combined on a bill. Oh, we're going to fix the infrastructure. we we got to have another infrastructure bill because you guys didn't think. It's all emotion. It's all feels good. If it feels good, do it. Well, sometimes... We have to start thinking and using reason and logic instead of just emotion. And now is that time. All right, quickly, let me uh, read some of your comments. Then I'm going to, let's see here. Doop, doop, boop, 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 boom. Let's see. Sarinda says, many homeless are homeless by choice. Notice I said many, but not all. So don't get y'all's panties in a bunch. I'm saying the same thing. William, we ain't paying for anything till we pay out the national debt. What money is spent is other people's. Joe says, howdy. Anna says, it's a lifetime thing. Personally, pulled many, many were taken to hospitals in New York, gave them baths, clothes, food, and they go back the same thing in the same day. Carol, hey, Nancy, we're watching from Texas. Sean says, that's why they call us the left coast. Joe, they're everywhere. Uh, blah, 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 absolutely. We pay our own debt first. Um Mary says, I don't know how they live. It's extremely hard to sleep in the cold at night. And by the way, you know, this time of the year is, is horrible. I don't care who they are or what reason they are for being homeless. And a lot of them doing it for political reasons, too, to just show how bad it is. Um, our prayers are with you. You've made a poor choice, some of you, who've done this for, for political or for uh, lifestyle choices. You've made a very poor choice this winter. And uh, I do believe that we'll have to, and we should, do everything we can to help save you and correct your mistakes and help you uh, survive through this. We don't want to see anybody starve, and we certainly don't want to see anybody freeze. But, you know, for example, EBT cards and Section 8, you get plenty to live on. You do. You do. David was an Army cook, says truth. To, 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 to keep the money home and help USA. Mary says, I see them on the beach in San Diego. They have a shower outside if they want. Sean says, just say Rocket Man. It's easier to say. Uh, divide, we are weak. United, we are strong. That is true, Tom. Paz says, stop giving away money. We'll be okay. Mm-hmm. Cindy says, it would help our country if they froze Clinton's and Obama's assets. Take them back. It's all stolen money. It would help the U.S. and get rid of some of their debt. I don't know how much the Obamas stole. I'll be honest. I mean, he did have that book. I am not. I see. I don't think Obama's in it as much personally. He's in it for the legacy and he's in it to fundamentally change America. Clintons are in it for the cash and the power. That's what I think. Do, 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 do. Adriana says, this is so ignorant. The comments are just lies. They're lies, I tell you, lies. Adrian, please tell me what are some of the lies. Tell me what a lie is. What I mean, if it's a comment that's a lie, if it's something that I've said that's a lie, please tell me, and we can talk about it. Or if it's a comment that somebody else says, I'll let you know. By the way, I'm about out of time. Adrian, if you hurry up and put something out, I will... Uh, 
uh, comment on it quickly. But I do want to let you know, uh, I need you to go and follow me on the Hear Me Out app. Hear Me Out app. Uh, Hear Me Out app. The deal is... Too many of these social media uh, formats and platforms are censoring conservative speech. We must stand up to them. At the Hear Me Out app, I comment two or three times. I listen to a lot of your comments. It's only 42 seconds maximum comments. Sometimes it's funny. Sometimes it's political. Sometimes it's a movie review. It's just whatever in the world it is. Do me a favor. If you would, please follow me on the Hear Me Out app. Just download the Hear Me Out app on your phone. Hear me out. It's one word. And then find me, Rusty Humphreys. Just type in hashtag Rusty. I usually pop up. Or Rusty Humphreys, one word. Because I started it off wrong. And so if you just type in Rusty in a space, I I did it wrong. Yes, Surrender. Hear me out app on your phone. Download that, please. And follow me, Rusty Humphreys. And comment on there. If you're commenting and stuff, do a hashtag Rusty. I'll try to follow. You know what? I'll follow you. If you follow me this week and type in hashtag Rusty, I will follow you and listen to your comments. How about that? Don't forget to find them out at the nice folks. Find the nice folks at Liberty One TV. Subscribe to that wonderful uh, group of conservatives. They are awesome ladies and gentlemen. And you should find them and follow them. Hear me. Uh, it's uh, Liberty One TV. Uh, you find on Facebook and also on Roku and a whole bunch of places. Just type in Liberty One TV and find them. The nice folks at Right Wing News are doing an awesome job on Facebook. Make sure you follow them and like them, read their stories. And, of course, if you'd find me, Rusty Humphreys, on Facebook, type in Rusty Humphreys. And look for me in a blue shirt. That's the one to like. There's other ones. Don't follow those. Just the one that says Rusty Humphreys. And uh, follow me. Rick says liberals disagree, but they don't have answers, so they call them lies. Of course they do. They don't use reason and logic. It's all emotion. And they either have to call you a liar or a bigot or a racist. I just want the debate. I just want the truth. Danny says God, guns, and guts. Her. Cindy checking in. Thank you, Cindy. Appreciate you. Sean, Thomas, Sorenda, Rick, Dave, Carol, Joe, everybody. Thank you very much. Don't forget the podcast, The Rusty Emery's Rebellion. If you've got an iPhone, it's super, super easy. Just look for the podcast app on your phone and find The Rusty Emery's Rebellion. Subscribe to it. Listen to it. Love it. We're here every night, 9 p.m. in the east, 6 p.m. in the west, unless I got something else going on. See you next time. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Rusty Humphreys, and this is the Rusty Humphreys Rebellion.